Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of A Life Led Simply and this week we will be talking about essential oils as natural medicine or as an alternative to normal medicine. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you that if you like what you see, please remember to like the channel, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit the notification button so that you get notified of new content every time that new content is released. And while I'm on that topic, I also want to thank our loyal watchers and listeners. And if you want to be one of them, then please remember to sign up to the newsletter so that you can get all the content and all the principles and everything else that we release. And also go find us on social media. I'm sure we'll be just as entertaining there as what we are here now. If you want, the links are all down below in the um, description. So let's get into this week's episode. Today we will be talking about essential oils, but not as in the sense of, oh, they smell nice and they're clean and whatever normally comes up, but as an alternative to actual medicine. Now, before we go into this, let's first look at what are essential oils. So essential oils are basically an oil derived from a botanical extract or, or some plant matter. It can be a root, a stem, a bark, a seed, a fruit, any part of the plant that is then either cold pressed or distilled in some way and that then gives you a very concentrated oil. Now this oil is seen as um, as I said it's concentrated so it's got high amounts of good chemicals and things in it that has medicinal properties the research is a bit sketchy and most people can't agree whether essential oils work or if they don't work if they and if they do work are they as effective as the natural health community will have you believe um, are they safe etc so this is a wide debate one that i do not want to go into i can tell you without uh, any doubt in my mind that for me and my family and the way that we live essential oils work now you can tell me that it is a placebo effect or that it's i don't care if it's the placebo effect then it is very very effective I find that since using essential oils for various things in and around my house and my life, things have generally gotten better. We take lots of, well, lots less medicine. We aren't sick that often. Um, the house smells great. So there are lots of benefits involved. And if that's just the placebo effect, then as I've said, it's very effective. And I will keep on doing what I am doing. So, if you want to try this out, please do, but as with everything in life, caution needs to be taken. And again, I say this very often and I can't say it enough, just because something is natural doesn't mean it's just safe. And that is that applies to essential oils as well. Just because they are natural doesn't mean that you can't have an adverse reaction or that something bad can happen. So before you try any of this, and before you dive into this, please first speak to your doctor, speak to someone with enough expert knowledge to steer you in the right direction. And then when you decide to do this for yourself and to take the plunge, always, always first test. Do a skin patch test to make sure that you have no allergic reaction. Ensure that the essential oils that you are planning on using doesn't have a counter effect or a contraindication or something with the medication that you are on. Also that you have no um, existing medical issues like high blood pressure or diabetes or anything like that. Especially then you need to speak to your doctor. And lastly, just to err on the safe side, don't take essential oils internally. I know there's lots of um, references that say that it is safe and there's others that says it isn't. I myself have not taken the chance. I would not use it internally until it can be 100% proof that it is safe. So, essential oils as natural medicine. When I say we use essential oils as a natural medicine, I am not saying that we never go to the doctor or we never use normal medicine, normal allopathic 
drugs or Western medicine. Because we do. We go to the doctor, we take pills, we drink medicine, we have been on antibiotics, we go on antibiotics when it's needed, but that is the key words, when needed. So we don't run to the doctor every time we have a sniffle, and even if we do end up at the doctor, we have a very amazing doctor who doesn't reach for his prescription pad every time you walk through the door so we always um, investigate alternative means of reaching the same goal so for instance if we have an earache or an ear infection we will first try um, sweet oil with a few essential oils in and if that doesn't work then we will move on to antibiotics but it's not first and foremost antibiotic antibiotics so we've been blessed to have a medical practitioner with knowledge that can help us either way and that we always first considers the alternative before going for the hardcore drugs. So as I said, we have been on antibiotics. I'm not saying that you should not use medicine. Please guys, please. My youngest child is an asthma sufferer or she has asthma. We use her medicine every single day. I am not going to take the chance of trying to treat her naturally. I will use my natural remedies and my natural things as a support to support her immune system, to make her life easier. Um, but it's not going to be the medicine that we rely on to keep her healthy and to keep her um, asthma attacks at bay. So whenever I say we use natural medicine, please understand that when it comes to life-threatening situations or even something that can escalate into a, a life-threatening condition we go to the doctor and we use the natural things to support our immune system to make the effects of the drugs less to make us heal faster and then to also keep it from happening again okay so now that i've given you all the disclaimers <laughs> we could go on to which essential oils are a must-have if you want to move over to traditional medicine or, or natural medicine instead of just allopathic drugs. So the first essential oil I will always always have in my house even though I hate the smell of it is lavender. Lavender essential oil it is firstly safe and gentle enough to use on kids so you can use it on your baby and on your toddler right through to elderly people. Lavender is a great soother so you can add it to your bath water to bring down emotions to make everyone calm and relaxed so it's great for sleep. It helps with burns, with itchiness so if you were stung by an insect or you have a scrape or a burn anything like that lavender oil is your go-to oil. It also helps with earache, so you can add a few drops of lavender essential oil to your sweet oil and then add it or drop it into your ear if you have an earache. And it also helps with nappy rash, so any skin ailment that needs to be soothed or that is burning, anything like that, lavender oil is your go-to oil. The second oil is tea tree. Now tea tree oil, I have to give you a word of caution. Um, you might, or there are people that are sensitive to it. I developed a sensitivity to tea tree oil for a very short while, and after eliminating it and slowly reintroducing it, I'm now fine, but only in small quantities. So, tea tree oil is what they refer to as first aid kit in a bottle. It does anything and everything it's antifungal, antibacterial, antimicrobial antiviral so if you want to clean something if you want a, a tea tree oil is your go-to you can put it on your foot on your feet if you have a foot fungus like athlete's foot it's great for ingrown toenails um, add it if add a few drops to your shampoo if you've got a lice infestation and you can even add one or two drops to your shampoo always to make sure that you don't get lice nice what's the plural anyway if you add a few drops to your um, washing machine when you wash your clothes 
then you also disinfect them and that's especially handy if you have something like a stomach bat, bug or gastro that went through your house so then you kill all the bacteria and all the parasites and things to stop it from happening again it's also great to stop inflammation so if you have a cut and you're scared it's going to get infected put some um, tea tree oil on to disinfect and it will also help speed up the healing so lamina tea tree oil next one peppermint peppermint smells divine and it is also very helpful when you have fever if you diluted and um, put a few well rub that under the soles of your feet you will see it breaks the fever almost immediately so great for fever it stops a headache in its tracks if you have migraine then you need to get peppermint well you simply roll a little bit at the back of your neck over your temples or even on your wrists and it stops the headache if you've got migraine it stops you being nauseous and seeing spots so it immediately and dials down the migraine so peppermint is great for that it's wonderful for energizing so if you go through a mid-afternoon slump you just inhale a bit of peppermint oil and it will bring you up to speed in no time so peppermint oil also a must-have in your house and then my next one is my absolute favorite scent in the whole wide world and that is eucalyptus eucalyptus is one of the bottles that i buy frequently because we use a lot of it because it is calming so i use it to ease anxiety it is also um, great for coughing so if you have a throat infection or you're a little bit sick it helps with coughing especially if you inhale it through steam um, it is wonderful as a vapor rub so don't use fix there's stuff in it that you don't want in your in your body or on your body i make a homemade vapor rub with peppermint oil eucalyptus comfort and a little bit of wintergreen that i add to coconut oil and then i put that on the chest of whoever is sick or when little a2 has an asthma attack it also helps with that so eucalyptus it clears the um, airways it calms you down it's just a wonderful wonderful oil it also has a little bit of um, analgesic properties so it can dim pain so you can apply it topically if you have sore joints or sore muscles and then it also helps with the inflammation that is often that often accompanies pain and sore soreness and then the last one that I can't live without is rosemary oil now, the scent of rosemary oil is to some people a little bit not offensive but they don't like it that much I find in small quantities it does have a nice herbaceous fresh smell so if you want to diffuse something that helps with calm and concentration and anxiety then I would recommend a blend of eucalyptus a little bit of rosemary one of the citrus oils like orange or pink grapefruit and then um, anyway those three already will will do the trick so rosemary it's got a long list of of uses but the one that i use it the most for is for pain so if you have um, an inflammatory condition like arthritis or fibro or something like that where you've got sore points or sore joints then applying rosemary oil topically will stop the pain almost immediately it, it works amazingly well and if you go and you mix peppermint oil eucalyptus um, and rosemary you've got a pain bomb that works better than deep heat or any of those other um, your yeah, topical pain creams so rosemary is wonderful for that if you add it to your diffuser it also improves your concentration while keeping you calm so it's just one of those oils that you can basically use it for anything and that is one of the keys of, of these oils that I've now mentioned they've got so many uses that if you decide I'm only gonna buy a handful of oils then go get those ones because the uses are varied and wide reaching so you can use it from having a toothache to earache stomach ache joints that are sore fever headache right across the board there is one of these oils will will sort you out 
and then if you want one of the more exotic oils I would recommend going for clove clove oil is wonderful if you have a toothache so it burns like hell the first few minutes that you put it on and then it kills all feeling so you can eat you can do whatever you want even if you've got a broken tooth or you went in for dental surgery it stops the pain and it keeps it dead dead for a rather long while so you'll be able to finish your meal and digest it and enjoy it before the pain comes back clove oil is also great for earaches and for other aches and pains so also if you want to add it to your pain balm as i've just mentioned it will also amp up the effectiveness of that and then the last one that i want to discuss is the royal essential oil and that is frankincense frankincense is very expensive it's one of the most expensive oils but it's also one of the most beautiful oils that you will ever get the privilege of using wonderful for wrinkles so if you've got mature skin you can make a little ointment with frankincense and some of the floral oils like geranium um, lemon is also great for that the citrus oils eucalyptus also and make your own eye cream or eye serum or even a facial cream because it really does help with fine lines and wrinkles and makes your skin also clear and spot free and then it is wonderful to put in a diffuser if you want if you like meditate it gives you clarity that you will never get anywhere else and people say that their meditation goes that much deeper when they um, use frankincense also if you do a spiritual practice like reading your bible or praying frankincense will also help you tap in to that real much easier then it's also wonderful for energy and for keeping you calm so it gives you that energy but not an extreme spike so you won't be erratic it will give you just a good slope of energy while still making you focused so those are the essential oils that I would recommend you get if you are interested in changing to a more natural approach with your medicine. But as I've already warned and said a hundred times, and I'm going to say this more, a hundred times more, always first speak to your doctor. Never leave your medication. Never just let, let it go and move over to medicine, or to natural remedies. Always use the natural as a support to whatever your physician or your doctor prescribed if you have um, doubt please discuss it with them and nothing is stopping you from getting a second or a third opinion but you need to put your own health and safety first and that goes with everything here so use a good pinch of logic and practicality think about things do your own research but just don't try it because not to try it because you are scared so if you've got any questions about essential oils as natural medicine please leave them for me here or you can send me an email all the information is on the page in the description and you can also go get my very handy cheat cheat sheet printable <laughs> through the website so you can find the link also in the description i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you again for the next episode Bye.